This episode, this episode we're talking about, about solar. I hear the drone because it's really close to my face. Now it's coming even closer. No way. Does that sound good now? So if you haven't gone and seen the electrical video, go go see that. <laughs> Something's happening. Ta -da. If you don't give a shit about the electrical and you're just like, I only care about the solar, dude. Okay, watch this. Again, solar is a brand new thing to me. It still is a new thing to me. I'm slowly learning about it. I uh, am learning what I want to learn about it, basically. When I first started, I didn't know the amount of like solar I needed to power the battery, or charge the batteries, to then, you know, run the appliances I have in the van. And that's why I read, and that's why I reached out to Trent and Alley, and they helped me out immediately. They told me, "Here's what you need to get. This is the price it's going to be. It's the best bang for your buck." So I got two. Renergy 300 watt Rocky. Okay. Two Renner Renergy Renergy Renergy. I think it's just Renergy. Renergy. Two Renergy 300 watt 12 volt monocrystalline. They're not 12 volt. Two Renergy 300 watt 24 volt monocrystalline panels. That was hard to say. I tried to say that like five times. And that brought in 600 watts of solar <laughs> through. The solar cables, which I bought two packs of the 10 feet Renergy solar cable extensions, and then that ran through the <coughs> waterproof, <coughs> the weatherproof cable entry. <coughs> Drill two holes in the top of your van. <coughs> and then it goes down into your Palmer. It's a weird spelling, it's like P O W M R, like Mr. M P P T charge controller. You need that charge controller so it could take that 24 volts of uh, 600 watts of solar energy down through your cables into that charge controller and it converts it into 12 volts. Again, my batteries that I purchased were two VMAX 200 amp hour AGM deep cycle batteries. This, these facts, man. These facts. Let's talk about the panels, folks. They're big. They're about three feet by five feet. Actually, I have the exact dimensions written down here. They are 64.96 by 39.25 inches. And then they are about two inches thick. Exact measurements, 1.57, so about an inch and a half thick. They're about 20 pounds a piece, so they're not that heavy, uh, but they're big. I was able to get that big of a panel because the Ram ProMaster is wide enough to support that size of a panel. You could set them lengthwise, side to side, you know, so you could fit them in there, and I was able to squeeze them in between my two uh, Max Air fans, which I made sure to take measurements of the distance between my Max Air fans, my Max Air fans before I installed those panels because I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna cut them short. All right, so I'm not gonna put it back here because I need at least 80 inches between each fan for my solar panels because they're 39 inches wide. Anyways, I got most of that stuff from Amazon, which I'll link below. So once the panels showed up, I had to figure out how I was gonna attach them to the top of the van. Now I've seen people buy these really expensive roof racks for vans and those will go up anywhere from like 1500 to $5,000, I don't know, there's crazy ones. They make them where it's like the solar panels are deck and you can hang out on your solar panels, which is crazy. But I wanted to do it in the cheapest way possible. And so when I went back to my dad's, we looked up in his loft, he had nine feet stretches of Unistrut. And when we went up and measured, we saw that we could have connected to three of the pre-existing mounting points on the Ram ProMasters. Those are there for racks. They make racks that are specifically built to mount straight to the ProMaster so you don't have to drill new holes in there. Like uh, ladder racks, those are more popular because these are utility vehicles. But we wanted to use those pre-existing mounting points so I went online and I found that there was this website called Vantech that offered 
these uh, mounting brackets so that you can mount their roof rack straight to the roof of your Ram Promaster. I just bought those mounting pieces and figured that I could take those, mount them to the Unistrut, and then mount the solar panels to the Unistrut. <laughs> so easy. It wasn't. They come with these mounting hardware bolts, and then this is the bracket that slides on. And then the tools, because I'm trying. All right, so these bottom brackets that come with the mounting brackets pull up from these pre-attached tabs that all Ram ProMasters come with. And so you slide that in, you put your two bolts on, and then hopefully these line up like so. Hmm, that's how that works. And then you tighten them on. So it's now 5.30 and we didn't get the solar panels on. We got the Unistrut on, so that's all up there. But we don't have the proper L brackets, or we don't even know if we're gonna end up using that to mount the solar panel to the Unistrut. I guess Kyle and I can um, dummy rig it. We could dummy rig it up. What ended up happening was we got the panels up there and we had an idea on how we wanted to do it. This is the nine foot unistrut and we got it on both sides. And as you can see, we mounted it using that hardware from Vantech and it's pretty solid. It ain't gonna go nowhere. Now we gotta take the panels up and see how they're gonna fit. Okay. So as you can see, these solar panels take up the entirety of the roof from side to side easily. That's 600 watts of solar. Those are some big panels. And I think we're only about two and a half inches, three inches up. That ain't bad. Got some clearance here to uh, catch some leaves and get stuck. Focus. What we have up top are nine foot pieces of this, which is Unistrut. But then I went and grabbed these uh, channel springs, which go into the Unistrut like so. So basically the spring keeps tension on it and then it just slides in and those two notches slide right in to these edges, which I'm making this look stupid. Pause. Repause. Okay. So it should just slide right in. <laughs> like so. So basically, we have these, it keeps tension on it, and then we've got some half inch bolts to mount into there. But that doesn't mean that we're gonna be able to mount the solar panels to this. So, that's why I got these little corner brackets, which are, I think it's like a ha uh, an inch by an inch and a half. We'd take L brackets. We'd take the L brackets. One part would mount to the Unistrut, have a bolt, boop, poke through there and mount to one of the Unistrut spring uh, bolts. And then have the solar panel hooked to the other part of the L. So it'd boom, right there, you got your connection. Also, I don't know if you can tell by my nasally voice, I think I've got a cold. In the summer? in the summer from lack of sleep and these are aluminum sides smart person would start with a smaller bit there's a hole you want the socket oh no you got it in there Once we got the panels up there, we figured out that the way we mounted the Unistrut, only using three of the mounting points instead of four of the mounting points because we didn't have like an 11 foot piece of Unistrut, it was nine foot, we kinda didn't have enough space 
to mount all the corners of the solar panels to the Unistrut. We were able to mount the front and back ends, but where they touched, it was too tight and you couldn't fit the L brackets in there, so we had to figure out another way of attaching them. So, what we're doing is placing them on the sides now and then drilling up into the bottom. At least that's the idea. I wanted to mount the solar panels right off the bat and I wanted to do it before I moved out of my house because they took up a lot of space in the van and it would save space when I was moving all my other shit to my mom's and getting rid of a lot of it. But it ended up not working out. We couldn't get it to mount correctly. There was not enough space. And so I ran out of time and had to tackle it again once I was at my dad's for that week that I took off. What are you doing? <laughs> but now, yeah, we're gonna see if we can get the solar panels up finally. This is like the sixth day I've said we're doing it, so getting those up will be really cool. By the time we got to the, where we could mount the solar panels to the roof, I had already put in the bathroom vent fan. And because I'm really good at putting holes in the van, I put it right where the two solar panels come together. And where they come together, the solar panels are like rimmed with this like aluminum lip that come flush down. The center parts are just like, they're hollow. So it, if it would have landed there, it wouldn't have touched. But because I landed right on that spot, we couldn't set the panels down on the Unistrut anymore. They would bubble over. So we had to create risers and my dad just had some like weird plastic piece that came from like a pool or something. And we cut it into uh, one inch pieces or like seven eighth pieces and used those as risers on it. Easier to center punch it. Get it out. So the solar panels are mounted, and this is how they're mounted. This inch part is mounted to the solar panel. We just drilled a hole through the aluminum, and then this inch and a half section runs down through this to those Unistrut mounting pieces underneath these little guys with the springs on them and it's sturdy. We didn't have enough space to do this where the brackets are poking out this way. On the insides there wasn't enough space so the center points needed to be mounted to the side because they're pretty much flush. As you can see, there's only a little gap between them. They're mounted down there, same way. We just, we didn't use the Unistrut spring things. We just mounted two, some half inch locking nuts on both sides. And this one mounts straight up through. This one's like an inch and a half. No, this one's two inches. No, that's an inch and a half. Inch and a half, inch and a half. And then the two inches are on the sides, but yep. And then everything's held down by the Unistrut, which is ran to this. Now we need to run. Luckily, these are exposed pretty much. And so our connections, our connections here are easily accessible so we can get up in there and run them down to the bottom. Word of advice, just make sure if you put a vent or anything that's going to be underneath the solar panels that there is enough clearance to get the panels on. But eventually we got it all attached and it was time to finally connect those cables together to run into the charge controller, well into the van, into the charge controller. So since the solar panels are 24 volts, we wired them into series, which then generates 48 volts. It then goes down to the charge controller, which converts those 48 volts to 12 volts, bringing in up to 50 amps. So we're about to send the solar cables through. Now, another issue is this is wider than the ribs. 
so there's no flush mounting it over anywhere on this part of the van. So we're thinking back here, even though it's not level, it's still a lot more, you know, secure than if it was on this rib. So I think we're going to send it back here. I'll line this with butyl on the bottom of it. Two holes, doot doot, positive and negative, and throw it down there and feed them through once they're uh, sealed on and then seal this up. Got the butyl on, it's not good. Got some rubber uh, spacers. I made a cool smiley face out of it. Some blood's on the side. And then we're gonna try to fish them in. All cleaned up. This is where we've got the Cords running through. We put some butyl in there just to seal it up. It's nothing fancy. These are the DC wiring, which runs down the frame. And one of them made it, which is the positive, because it had it was running off the farthest panel, or the closest panel to the back of the van. But this one was short, so I cut one of the spare uh, solar cables I bought, and then connected it and just gave it that extra length it needed to go to here. I didn't really film how we wired it into the charge controller. Uh, the charge controller comes with instructions on how to wire it. It's pretty straightforward if you just refer to it if you end up buying that thing and then those run out of the charge controller into the batteries at 12 volts and charges your batteries at 50 amps up to 50 amps. That's running. I don't know if that's good or bad. So we're getting power from the sun. Finally that's hooked up. But uh, yeah, that's solar. 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 I don't think anything else really needs to be stated about it. I don't think. Um. Uh, I missed something. I will go and show you guys what it's like pulling in uh, solar on a bright sunny day. I think tomorrow is gonna be a nice sunny day, so I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like on the, uh, the MPPT charge controller. All right, now it's the next day. As you can see, it's super sunny out. Uh, it's about 2.30, so the sun's almost like directly above my head. I don't know if I can even show it. Boom, it's that bright light. I'm gonna show you guys what the uh, solar's pulling in right now. So you can see there it's hovering around like 60, what, five to 68 volts. Now it's dropping. Going back up and uh, 380 watts. I don't think there's anything else I had to say. So, yeah, that's not true. During the electrical video and during this video, I forgot to mention my Bluetooth battery monitor. I didn't really film how we installed it. I was busy probably doing something else and just had a time lapse going, so there's kind of footage of us doing it, but nothing in detail. If you do end up going with it, it comes with an instruction manual. Again, just refer to that. It's pretty straightforward. It almost has like, I believe it has pictures, so it's like building Legos or something. All it consists of is a monitor and a shunt. I believe that's what it's called. You connect your positive, and your negative and then you take a cable that then runs from the shunt and runs into the monitor and then that monitor sends out a Bluetooth signal that you connect to on your phone uh, so you can monitor your battery. So right now I don't really have anything running. The inverter with the fridge is going so that's what that negative three amps are. But let me show you what it does when I uh, Turn the fans on. One fan. Two fans.
So you can see that three days dropped down to two and it's still kind of cruising down. Negative eight amps, 110 watts. There you have it. Chilling out on the shoes. Having a monitor is nice so you know what kind of power you're using, how much is charging, and then it will track it so you can see you know, which days you used X amount of power compared to other days so you can kind of figure out your weekly usage. I did have a moment when I drained my batteries pretty low overnight. The uh, power, the shore power I plugged into had popped a breaker at my buddy's place and so uh, a little alarm had set off because I set the monitor to go off at a uh, certain voltage and so it beeps and it warned me, hey, you know, things are getting low. So I turned everything off and I, you know, figured out what was going on. So it saved me from draining my batteries completely. Because once you deplete them, uh, it kind of kinks the armor of your battery. Now, that's the end of the solar video. Uh, another one, done. I hope it helped out. I mean, the way people mount their solar panels on the roofs of their vans, it's always different. This was just one way to do it. Uh, I don't think it's probably the best way. I had access to that Unistrut, so we went with it. And click sub subscribe. You're probably already subscribed, honestly. The people who are watching these videos are the ones who are already subscribed. But you can tell your friends. You can tell people who are interested in building a van. Maybe this can help them out. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll just make it harder for them. Uh, you can hit the bell. That's a thing. I don't even know what it does. Uh, but that's a thing. People tell me that they should be hitting the bell. Yes, stay tuned for more build stuff. I'm also going to be doing some more travel videos. And then I think I'm going to do one year living in a van because I just hit that benchmark. It has been over a year living in a van full time. So, I should probably talk about it. Give you guys the scuttlebutt of what it's like. Listen to me. Until next time. I keep doing the finger guns. Till next time. 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 Bye. How do you think I should end the videos, Arch? Arch. Hey. Dude. Dude, are you too cool? Oh. What do you think I should do to end the videos? Just lay down, fat belly. <laughs>